All right, welcome everybody. Hello, it's good to see you. It's good to have TJ here. Jeremiah is attentive. Okay, we're up to week nine today. Week nine. I know we're a bit of out of line with the, the Bible books because we're up to book eight, even though up to week nine. Why is that? Because we were in Genesis twice, remember? Okay, let's start with prayer. All right, let's close our eyes, hands together. All right, we're going to talk to Jesus now, so no mucking around. Okay, let's pray. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, bringing us here, and thank you for blessing us and uh, help us to learn the lesson that we have today as we look at the book of Ruth. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just a reminder, three rules. Who remembers the three rules? Do you remember one of the rules? Danny, what's one of the rules? Sitting down. Sit down, that's right. You sit quietly when the bishop's talking. What's another one, Zephy? Put your hand up when you want to talk. That's a good one. Who remembers the last one? Listen to the bishop. Pay attention, that's right. Listen to the bishop when the bishop's talking. Oh, you guys are so good. How do you guys remember this? Is it because I remind you every week? <laughs> Maybe. All right, Book of Ruth. So we're going to learn about the story of Ruth today. We're going to learn about one of the ladies in the Bible. She even has... No, remember, we have to put our hand up. So it's not just knowing the rules, you have to follow the rules, remember? <laughs> okay, so we're looking at the Book of Ruth today. Ruth is one of the ladies in the Bible. We're going to look at Boaz, a short book. And this lady was honoured by God that she even had a, a book named after her. So there are different books. Remember we learned about Joshua. So Joshua was somebody in the Bible. And today we're going to look at the story of Ruth. So I'll show you a few pictures that I got from the internet. And we'll just go through the story of, of Ruth. So the story starts with Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi. And her husband, who knows Naomi's husband's name? I don't think anyone would know how to say it. Maybe you won't even know how to pronounce it. His name is Elimelech. Elimelech. Can you say that? Elimelech? I think I'm saying it right <laughs> off the top of my head. Naomi and Elimelech. So what happened? What are they doing here? Well, in Israel, there was a famine. What's a famine? Famine is when there's not enough food. It's not enough food for everyone. So there was a famine in Israel. So Elimelech, his wife Naomi, his two sons, Marlon and Killian. Those are funny names, aren't they? But those are names, those, those are Hebrew names. We, we, we hear them and we think they sound funny because you know, we live in Australia, we have Australian westernized names, but these are Hebrew names. If Marlon and Killian, they went into Moab because there was a famine. And when they went into Moab, the sons found two wives, one each, and that was Orpah and Ruth. So this is where Ruth comes into the story. Ruth was married to one of the sons of Naomi and Elimelech. Now unfortunately, when they were in Moab, Naomi's husband died. So Elimelech died. So he died, but not only did Elimelech die, Marlon and Killian died as well. well so all that, <laughs> yeah, that's right, the father and the two sons. Everyone died when they were in, well, when they were in Moab. We don't, we're not told why, but when they were in Moab, Naomi lost her husband, lost her two sons, and all she was left with was her two daughters-in-law. So she wanted to change her name to Mara, which meant bitter, because she's like, the Lord had dealt very bitterly with me. So Naomi decides, okay, well, I'm going to leave Moab and we're going to go back to Israel because now the famine's over. She's going to go back to where she came from, which was Israel. And she told her daughters-in-law, you know, you guys stay here. You know, I'm going to go back to Israel. But Ruth said, no, I'm not going to forsake my mother-in-law. I'm going to stay with my mother-in-law and you know, your land's going to be my land, your God's going to be my God. But Orpah decided to stay in Moab. So what does it represent here? It represents a lady that decided to follow the Lord 
and a lady that didn't. You know, not saying that Orpah actually didn't follow the Lord, but that's what the two ladies represent. That this lady went back to Moab, forsook the Lord, forsook Naomi, and Ruth stayed with Naomi and went into Israel. Now they were poor when they went back to Israel, right? Because of the famine in Moab and their, their husbands were all dead already. So Ruth went to collect wheat in the field. So the way God had it in the Old Testament, when the reapers, so these are like the farmers, when they would go and reap the field of the wheat, they wouldn't go back over the field again. So they would just grab what they could and if they left anything behind, then the people that were poor, they could follow behind and pick up the wheat and have something to eat. So in the Bible they were told, don't, don't go over your field twice. They just go over it once and whatever's left behind is for poor people. They can come and do some work to get, some, to get their food rather than just getting it for free. You know, poor people today, they just want to get things for free. But in the Old Testament, God had a good system. Hey, if you, if you were poor and you couldn't find a job, you could go to a field and you can do some work and you could collect the wheat or the crop or the fruit that the reapers didn't pick up. So that's what Ruth did every day. She went to go collect food for her family. So as you could see that Ruth was a very hardworking woman. She wasn't a lazy person. See, so Ruth is a good example of somebody that chose to follow the Lord, but she also wasn't lazy. You know what lazy is? Lazy is when you don't want to do any work. Who feels lazy sometimes? I sometimes feel lazy. I can put my hand up. Yeah, sometimes feel lazy. What are you, Jeremiah? You sometimes feel lazy? Sometimes? <laughs> do you know what lazy means? <laughs> now what happened with Ruth? So Boaz, this is where Boaz comes into the story. Boaz was the man that owned this farm. And he saw Ruth gathering out, gathering hard, working hard every day, gathering food for her family, and he asked, you know, who is this lady? And this is how he found out about Ruth. And you know, Boaz kind of liked Ruth. So you know what, Boaz, when he saw Ruth every day, you know, struggling to, to pick up the wheat, after the reapers, you know what he told. You know what Boaz told the reapers. He said, "You know, you know when you reap the field, just leave a, a little bit more there. You know, on the field. You know, pur purposely just leave some on the floor. And then when Ruth comes, she can pick up more. So that's what he did for her. So Naomi started to realize that Boaz was noticing Ruth. So Naomi told Ruth. This is something they did in the Old Testament. It's not something we would do today, but." A way a woman would express interest in a man, she would go and lie at his feet when he was, when he was taking a nap. So Naomi told her daughter-in-law daughter Ruth, you know, you go lie at Boaz's feet. And then Boaz saw Ruth lying at his feet and knew that she was interested, so he tried to figure out a way that he could marry Ruth. Now, he couldn't marry Ruth directly because there was somebody that was nearer of kin to Naomi's husband that had a right to marry Ruth. So he had to go and figure out a way how he could convince this man to let him marry Ruth. So when he was at the gate, oh, I won't tell. So this is our verse for today in Ruth because Boaz recognized Ruth as a virtuous woman. So here's our verse today. It's from Ruth, chapter 3, verse 11. And this is Boaz talking here. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. This means you're very hard-working, you're a very uh, good-natured person. So it says here, Ruth, chapter 3, let's read it together. You ready? Ruth chapter 3 verse 11 and now my daughter fear not I will do to thee all that thou requirest for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman Ruth chapter 3 verse 11 so Ruth is a good example for us, isn't she? A good example for us to follow. So what did Boaz do? Boaz was one of the nobles in this city. He was sitting at the gate of the city. 
and he comes across, we don't know this guy's name, but we come across the next guy who, was, who had the right to marry Ruth. And he asks this man, he says, hey, you know, our brother Elimelech died and left a field. And he's asking, hey, do you want to buy that field or can I buy it? So the man says, no, I want to buy that field. But then he says, well, if you buy the field, then you have to marry Ruth as well. So this man didn't want to buy the field because he didn't actually want to marry Ruth. So Boaz asked him, well, maybe I'll buy it then and then I'll take Ruth to wife. So he did. And this is another thing that they did in those days in Israel, which is quite interesting, that when they made a deal with somebody, do you know what they did? They took off their shoe. They took off their shoe and gave it to the person as a witness that we just made a deal together. So here's Boaz. You see how he took off his sandal? And he's giving it to the man to, sim to show, hey, we made this deal. We made this agreement. And that's how Boaz ended up marrying Ruth. So what's the moral of the story of Ruth? Because do you know who Boaz is. Boaz was the father of Obed. You probably don't know who that is. Does anyone know who Obed is? No? Obed was the father of Jesse. And whose father was, who, who, who was Jesse the father of? He was the father of David the king. So you see? You know who David is? Yeah. That's it. That's right. He was the second king of Israel. We're going to learn about him soon. So what's the moral of the story here? Well, we see Ruth didn't forsake Naomi. She chose to follow the Lord. She worked hard. She ended up getting noticed by Boaz. So God blessed Ruth by choosing to follow God, by providing a husband for her. And she actually ended up being one of the descendants of Jesus Christ. So that's the interesting story of Ruth. So she's a good example for us and because she decided to follow the Lord, the Lord used her as part of the lineage of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Alright, so I hope you learned something there today. So today we've got, what does the ball mean? Games. We've got some games today. So we're going to go out to the, to the, whole, uh, to the oval <laughs> and play some games to help us, to remind us about picking up food and working hard for uh, Ruth. All right, let's, let's get up and let's get outside.